the coveted MS Cup, where all previous eight championship teams are forever enshrined and forever immortalized. In 2008, we had the Thundercats. In 2009, Mike and Ikes. In 2010, Speed Bag Scissor Hands. 2011, The Mariners. 2012, New Sanity. 2013, The Jonas Brothers. 2014, King Solomon. And 2015, Winner Winner. This year, there's an open spot for 2016. The Angels are taking on the Padres, who will forever be a man. For our World Series preview, and uh, joining us in this World Series preview is the newest addition to the league, this magnificent uh, masterpiece, uh, the new m &S. We're, we're really excited to feature it and, and, and uh, have it a part of the league, now the m &S Cup. So, uh, you know, it's, it's something where you forever will be immortalized, your name is uh, enshrined forever, and you live on and on. Etched and engraved. And we hope to have this a part of the league for many, many years to come. This is something long awaited. We should have probably done it earlier, but we're happy that we uh, got it done now and something we're very excited about. Um, and the winner of this year's World Series, whether it's Michael Solomon's, Melech Michael Solomon's Padres, or Isaac Norwood, who we were discussing before, this is his fifth. Fifth consecutive World Series appearance. As a captain. As a captain. That's even more impressive because that people make something. the World Series. So Isaac knows how to pick championship caliber teams, but, right. but. Does I mean, he know how to win? He only, how many times he, he won, won two. twice. So he has two championships. So he's, he knows how to get there, doesn't know how to finish. And there's one caveat here. The last time he won the starting pitcher was the World Series MVP is actually the starting pitcher of the Padres. Of the opposing team. Which and guess what? Who was on his team this and year? And he traded him. Right. So there's a lot going in over here. That's a storyline in itself. Um, you know, it's interesting. We, we know that both captains uh, this year were in the World Series last year. And Isaac Norwood Dweck did win it last year. Um, he has two players with him from last year's squad. Ike Mavora and Ray Esses. Right. Two veterans who in their own right are on this cup quite a few times. Yeah, Ray, Ray, Ray has multiple times. appearances. I yes. he has a championship uh, as a captain on Mike right. Nikes on this uh, so, so those are two guys that I know a lot of their team. And then, the rest uh, of their team is new. Wait, no, but then there's guys like Ike Chazanoff, who's won multiple times in other leagues for years and years. Yes, he's a professional and player. They have consummate professionals on their team. Um, also, a bunch of young guys like Stanley Cohen, Ralph Chira, and jo Kona. Jojo Saruya. So that's the guy. Guys. That's the guy that I think is going to be. If they win or not win, they're gonna they're gonna go with Joe. Whatever Joe does, as we all saw this past week, he's got a Jojo Saruya knows how to hit with power. So he is the new 2016 MS Home Run Derby champion. Could he uh, shoot a few in the gap against a guy like Ralph Sutton? I think he can. 100%. Yeah. And we also know he he has come a long way defensively at shortstop. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. uh, now. A cannon for an arm, and he's been clean. Yeah, he's so been fluid his last I think if, stop doing that. I think if he has a great week defensively, they have a puncher's chance. That's a little bit puncher's of puncher's chance. That's a preview that I what I'm going to pick I'm a little later. Go. I'm not going to go there to say that. Yeah. But. So here's the we got to talk. I know you guys all saw the commercial that we put together. Uh, the storylines are infinite when it comes to this right. World now series. it's funny about media week that we had this week. Something happened. The opposite. It's been, it's looked like this year, it's been Michael Miller Solomon and his team have been the loudmouths, have been the, the, the voices, have been the... They've been the, swag. Uh, they yes, they're the ones with swag and cockiness. Suddenly, and Isaac Norwood's been playing the well underdog. You guys are better. We can't be there. I don't know. I don't know if I trust now, him. My the picture. second media week started, the second On he advanced, he turned around and got ugly. He was starting to talk smack. It all changed. Talking. So I think, in my opinion, he saw that he has no shot of winning this thing based on the, the way the matchup goes and the team, if you look at it head to head. Team against team, you Team think? against team. So he said, the only way I have it is to maybe change it up no. and get into their head a little bit. See, I disagree. I really think that Isaac Noah Dweck looks at his team and says, I have the veterans. These guys are young. 
I'm going to win this thing, and he's letting them Meanwhile, know. hold on, we forgot. Joseph Arati, who is on their team right now, also has like four championships in Brooklyn. Right. I mean, he also won the tournament a few times. He's so. a phenomenal center fielder. He has yet to really show much it's of funny, that he, in our night league. I actually want to talk about that for a quick minute. Joseph Arati in spring without the gold ball, with the mush ball, he's an unbelievable hitter. For some reason, he comes to the night league, and he hasn't been hitting like I know Joe could hit. And he's getting on base. No, but he also is getting really lucky with like two RBI sack fly pop-ups right. all, every single week. He's yet to come. So I think he's they also to show what, what we know. Yeah, no, so they know it. He, he's going to be alive. I've seen it myself. I was his teammate multiple times, and I've seen him shine, but they need him to come to play on Monday night because, like we said, the way the Padres lineup is stacked, it's going to be really tough to beat him. So now, let's jump into the matchup. We know, as we said, wait, these wait. teams traded with each other. No, I want to go back to last year's storyline before we jump go into ahead. the matchup. We know, in Game 1, at the end of Game 1 of the World Series last year, whether you say it was intentional or not, Isaac Norwood-Dweck put his leg out, Michael Cohen fell over, tripped, he MCL, ACL, gone, they were out. They won the game, but then Norwood came out on fire because the, the MVP of the league was out, and they won games two and three. No. And what does that mean according to uh, Isaac Dweck has been saying all week long? Look, they lost one player and they fell apart. Right. What kind of team are they? they? Step it's up. not a team. Well, that player's back. Michael Cohen's there, and I would say he's better than ever. He uh, was better than he was last year. Right. Put a little bit more uh, maybe muscle on. And the way he played center field in that semifinal. So wait, they, they lost. That's how the World Series ended. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, the revenge tour began. Michael Mella Solomon uh, drafted a team and then traded for the rest. He has almost an identical squad. Very, with, very with, close. With there. improvements, because Jackie Cohen has been playing stellar at shortstop. We'll get there. Right. And and, and now, the, the Angels, somehow, some way, they found their way into the World Series because... You know, as the season was progressing, they didn't look like a World Series team, but then they came along at the right time. As always, they turned it on when they had to. They were one and four at one point, right. one and three. It's like when the Miami Heat, at the end of LeBron Wade years, they just coasted they just, until they had to, and then they wouldn't turn the Jets to. on. Yeah. They stopped taking the five-hour energy drink. They found their defensive line. Yeah, I think what we did is actually help them. We said they were old, they were slow, they, they were done. They were underneath them. And then all of a sudden exactly. they came, we're not old, we're still young, we still could compete with the young guys, and you know what? Guess what? Credit them. They did it. Because they really did do it. Um, the home team in this World Series is obviously going to be the Padres. Number one seed of the yes, Padres. They're the number one seed, assuming they're going to take uh, home field for games one and three, if necessary. Monday night, we can't wait. Um, it's going to be, as we mentioned before, Freddie Hittery, which is his first World Series appearance in our night league. I'm not sure if he so was in the World Series I, in other leagues. I don't think he, uh, he was in the World Series. He lost this past spring in Brooklyn. Okay. So, so either way, team. Freddie, uh, you know, he had that one really rough week against these Padres. Right. And then all of a sudden he went into lights out, shut down. I think it also helps that Joseph Wright went to center field for them. It's definitely a big and part of Chaz it. And Chaz in right center. There. And all of a sudden their outfield became locked down. And the, uh, the way Freddie pitches, he needs a good outfield. Now, it's interesting because that's what people are thinking. Was it this lineup just is built to match Freddie Hittery? Or is it he had a bad week and now he's... He, he, he kicked into gear. Their defense kicked into gear. That's that's what we can't wait and to so see. It's, I think it's a combination of both. Listen, their lineup, the one thing you got to look at about the Padres, Saul Cohen's a fly ball, deep gap shot hitter. Not really a ground ball base hit hitter. I mean, he I does it. He uh, Michael um, Cohen, you know, he does both. He's the one guy. Avi Mike Dweck. Solomon, Avi Dweck, but Aaron Dweck. The guys that really they look at as money guys in their team, they're the guys with the long fly balls. I think that, you know, it might be a question of will the stellar outfield defense of the Angels be able to uh, hemorrhage uh, what kind of crazy well, innings that they can one of the, one of the wild, One of the wild things that we've never seen, I think this is the first time going into a World Series, we can't really even guess what Isaac Norwood Dweck's team's defensive alignment's going to be. Well, Which is pretty I, wild. If I had to peg it, I would say they're going to put DT in right field. I think they're going to put uh, Chaz in right center field. They're going to play four across. I think, think so. I think uh, Joseph Ferrati in left center. So this is the this is the grand question. Do you leave the middle open for an offensive team I think like so. this against Freddie Hitter? I, I think you have to do it. I okay. think you have to do or it. Or I think Isaac, I think what Isaac's gonna do is play that game. DT is gonna be that ever moving. Roving, part. Yeah, yeah, the roving Come out on in for this guy, come on out. Well for listen, that that's guy. one thing that's funny. DT was actually a part of the the, the yeah, Valvinos he's the one squad player. last year. So the DT's actually that guy that was a, a good glue guy. 
And he's something that actually I think is the reason why the Angels are where they are because he's that type of player. The intangibles are he's one know, of the amazing. best defenders in the league. Yeah, because no, you could put him anywhere. Put him in center field, he gets the job done. Yeah, he gets the job done. Is he the best center fielder? No, but and I even think, though he's a lefty, you put him at shortstop, he'll get the job. I done. think at second base, he's probably the best second baseman in the league. Him and his uncle Isaac. But they're right there. I think DT, because of his age right now, is the best defensive second I agree. Baseman. I agree. And he's above average, if even anything, better than that in the outfield. So he's a big component for this game. Uh, uh, again, Jackie Cohen. You brought him up before. I think he's an X factor. Yeah. And I don't even think just defensively. Defensively... He's been amazing. So I, mean, I think, you know, the count is errors on one hand. After two weeks, everyone was saying, oh, let, let's see him do it for the duration yeah. of his season. All right, his season's over. over, and the playoffs are over. We're in the World Series, and he, he still didn't give up, have a hiccup. He had Does one he? gun, he had a one or two bad throws in a right, game, okay. strained it out right away. Right. So one or two ground balls that weren't even such easy plays. And that's it. And it's, makes, it's, it's, it's softball. He makes on everything that move. So he know? makes everything look easy. And listen, we watch enough softball to make these types of statements. We think Jackie Cohen defensively is a top three defensive shortstop in the defensive. Syrian community now, right now. Saying that defensively, I think offensively he's going to come to play in this World Series. He's been up and down. He's been juggling hard. He's, he's been juggling hard. I think against Freddie Hittery. Freddie. People didn't give enough credit to it, but they're starting to do it now because he's in the World Series. I wonder what the Padres are going to do with their lineup because they had Jackie Cohen batting second. Yeah, it didn't I mean, work. Then they put Avi batting second. They were flip-flopping. It didn't I make think, a difference because they made crazy comebacks right, against the Brewers. And, and you know what? Everybody can say what they want about lineups. It always, by happenstance, it goes one way or the other. It finds the guy. A couple of guys on the Padres that I'm going to really uh, give good shout-outs to that are back into the lineup guys that have been hitting. Then the cats. Yo, cats. Yeah, he was not lucky. Hit. Cats was uh, gone really late in the draft. Uh, people were down on him. Uh, Melech, his good friend, uh, took him. And uh, cats, uh, he got married when uh, it broke, and he came to play when it counted. Early in the season, and he was doing nothing. Was, you know what? That's not true because at the end of the day, he also was of two RBIs away from having the RBI lead. Okay. Week, so it didn't look as gorgeous, I guess. The he way get, he gets the job done, though. But he had some big hits, and he's smoking the ball. And there's some hits that he's getting. That are non defensive. Listen, I think it's attributed to isogenics. Isogenics uh, definitely okay. lost the upper body, chest right. fat. Now he's, he's a little bit faster swing as a lefty. Okay. And the moves are no longer. Yeah. And, uh, and what do I say by defensive alignments? Because Isaac Dweck's team, you know, is going to go all in on defending, trying to get into the opposing yeah, so team's brain. You know what's going to stack the right side? Right. But Nemi can go the other way. Let's see. So, that, this is something that. I don't know. This is why one of the reasons, maybe why, when Melech uh, picked the kids, it wasn't a terrible idea because they don't do those they know. little things. They, they don't know. know. They're young. They're athletic. They're great yeah. at games. You, know, you mentioned that. They I actually want to say do those things. We never spoke about this. He picked the kids. The kids had a seven-one lead, and the kids blew a seven-one lead. That's why he picked the kids. Right. You could say he made a mistake. No, maybe he didn't make a mistake. They're young. And foolish. Because I can guarantee yeah. you, if the Angels had a 7-1 lead in game yeah. two, there's Very no shot in hell they're losing. Highly doubted that they're losing that. So Even though, by the way, it's funny you say that, week one, they were up, I think, 8-0 against I mean, these Padres. That's the regular season. You start the regular season out. Right. Right. The intensity is not where it needs to be. You don't figure everything out yet with your team. I'm just saying when it's in the semifinals, uh, only young, inexperienced teams, listen, the kids are going to learn from it. Yeah, and I they're heard just they, getting better. They're kicking themselves after, obviously, after what happened. Yeah. And obviously, oh. uh, after what happened, but they are gonna, they're, they're gonna be, they're gonna be years and years to come, gonna be on top, I think. But they're gonna be drafted in the in the league next year because they got a taste of what it is. But back to the World Series. Who do we think is gonna be on this cup? So you know, you hear the way we're talking. There are a bunch of X factors. I just want to quickly, you know, give me thirty seconds. Uh, about looking the pros and cons of each team. The pros, obviously, of the Padres. We have the perennial MVP, reigning MVP, batting champion multiple years. Uh, Michael Cohen on the top of his game, playing better defense than he's ever played before in his career. Better than I've ever seen anyone play. You can see that on video. The guy making diving plays. catches and clutch moments. Amazing. Uh, and then, Covering ground like you would have Yeah, Saul Cohen uh, rising to the occasion, the big spots offensively. You have guys in the lineup that are not having great years, like Avi Duet, who you still are feeling. He's feared when he's up. Mike Solomon scuffling, still get a big hit. You have guys like Jackie Cohen playing lights out defense. You have guys like Box coming up in big spots. 
You have, I'm missing a few guys here. Tuna, he's a former World Series MVP. The guys in the World Series in, in YMSL. The guy, he's winning and winning and winning. Tuna's going to so get much. his at-bats too. He's been swinging a pretty Tuna good bat. Tuna has three triples in the semis. Right. You have so much riding for the Padres. Now let's press pause and look at the Angels. What do they have going for them? They have the veterans that win. We have Ike Mavora who knows how to win. We have Ray Esses who knows if how to win. If there's one guy on the field that you want up with a man on Mavora. second to what? I even, teams, I even I would, would say, say Ike Mavora. You just said a good thing. Both teams, including Michael Cohen, I'm taking Mavora up in a spot want that with a winning spot. run at second base, second and third, two yeah. out. It might not be pretty, but no. he's going to get the job He'll done. He'll go the other way. I, I, yeah. That's one thing they have going for them. That's part of what they have and the reason why they are here. Now, we, said, we said DT. There's uh, Now, you said Freddie Hittery. He could be a question mark. He could not. Bottom line is his stats are stats, and he, he, he's getting the job done. Now, that's the thing. These young, these old veterans, I should say, I think they're a good matchup for Ralph Sutton. That that's the, the why, the, why do you the, say that? Because the way Ralph pitches, he's got some uh, heat on his pitch. I think Mavora, Ray Esses, Isaac Norwood is already in Ralph Sutton's head. We know. I that. don't care what so anybody now, says. So now that it's media week is officially at the tail end, let's just say it. When they were choosing who they selected it, to play in round one, they didn't I want didn't tell you. The Angels. Forget they. I'll tell you who. Ralph Sutton said, I don't want any part of Norwood. Let him get knocked off. Let him get picked off. And once he's out, maybe we won't have to face him. I don't want to touch him. So, or, or we'll see him in the World Series. Yeah, but I'm just letting you know, he didn't want to face him in the first round because he was scared of him in the first round. So say what you want. That is a true statement. And Ralph is a little bit, I don't care what he says, he's brash and cocky and tuna can be tuna. But at the end of the day, Norwood is in his head a little bit because Norwood is in Norwood. So w listen, Woody has been oh, doing well, a great job. Well, that's why I say I say the veterans will get on base. We'll find their way on. But like you mentioned earlier, the series is going to come down to Joe Safarati and JoJo Soria. If those guys don't come through hey, with some extra what? base hits. They Ralph Cheer there at the end of the lineup that turns the lineup end, over. He's a great, he's a good, good bat, and he's fast. But I think when you have the main cogs batting two or three or two and four or three and four, wherever they're going to put him, they're going to be in that vicinity of the lineup. I, I'm, I'm saying it's a foregone conclusion that those guys are coming through. I think even Joe S. will be coming through. I think it comes down to guys like Reyes's. Because you're going to have three, four, five, then all of a sudden raise up a second and third, two out. Is Ray going to get that big hit? Okay. So I, I'm saying I know, it comes down I know to their team. I know Isaac has a, a lot of trust in Ray S's. No, he should. As he, he really, should. Look, he really does, I said so. it before. I'll say it again. He's all over this trophy. Ray's a winner. So, why, yeah, right. so we're gonna make my I'm gonna make my pick right now. Max will go after me. Okay. I am taking the Padres in a clean sweep. Wow. I think the Padres are gonna come and they're gonna come on early and they're gonna come on often and they're gonna keep on coming. I think the Padres are gonna be relentless. The revenge tour is finally gonna come to a close. They're gonna really stick the nail in the coffin, and when the old guys see that they're gonna be beat, they'll be beat. That's my opinion. So you think it's gonna be two convincing wins? I think they're gonna come through two times big, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Yeah. Okay, I still think that the Padres have a good offensive lineup, and like I mentioned, they have some good play. Again, one thing I didn't mention that I think Norwood, Isaac Dweck's team is gonna to try to do, heavy. I think they're going to try to pick on the right side of the Padres infield. I think they're going to test Avi Dweck and Victor Schrem up the middle as they should. all day long. That has been their only question right. marks on the Padres Avi team for five straight innings could look like the best defender, and then sometimes just three plays straight just okay. you know, doesn't look right. Victor Schrem, same deal. He sometimes looks great and then falls apart sometimes. I really think that they're going to try to pepper that right side, and uh, they're going to either win it, or lose it, testing that right side I of the field. I think the Padres are going to put up, put up too many runs. It's not going to make a difference how many times they go to right So I think side. game one is going to be a high-scoring event, and I do think the Padres are going to win. Game two, I see the Angels fighting back. There's too many veterans to go down easy. And in game three, I see the Padres taking it away. Okay, so we both Winning agree. Big. Both the Padres, the Padres. But I think it, I don't, you think it's going to be a closer series than I do. Oh, heck yeah. I, I even think game one is going to be a high score. I mean, look at the run differential between these guys on the season. Yeah, I'm throwing all that stuff out the and window. And you can't throw it out the window. I am. I think game one is going to be an 8-6. Hey, Padres one thing we win. should mention, the infamous tag to end game two uh, in the regular season between these guys, it was a tight, it was a one-run game. Right. And, and the Padres almost blew a game. We understand that. True. But listen, I, I, that's the way I feel. Right. I feel like the momentum is too strong to break, and the Angels, 
you know, I know guys like on their team, the veterans feel disrespected that everyone's heavy favoriting the Padres, but okay. listen, it's just it's so just you think talent's feel. just gonna push through? Not even talent, momentum and cohesiveness and the team unity is a lot stronger on one side or the other. I don't no, think I, it could. could I, like I said, I do think the Padres are gonna win. I think game one, I'm even gonna say score. I think it's gonna be eight six. Game two, I think it's gonna be a closer game. And uh, game three, I think Padres are going to take it. Either away way, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, once again, I'm calling forward. a sweep for the pods. He's calling two out of three for the pods, and uh, it's going to be amazing. Let's see. Let's see who gets enshrined wait. on this on trophy. unbelievable trophy. Last tidbit: Freddie Hittery got hit hard against these guys, but he did have a nine-inning span of a shutout in that in that double yeah. header. And then he got rocked. And then he got rocked again because it could it be they took their time off. That's where I think the big question is going to lie. Only time will tell. Can't wait to see. I just love night. that it's the two youngest pitchers. It's Henry versus Ralph. That's you know, great. That really that. is great. Either way, again, Shabbat Shalom. Enjoy uh, Media Shabbat Week. Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, Shabbat. Uh, exactly. And right. listen, Media Week was great. I hope you all enjoyed your time off in Vegas, enjoying whatever got a lot of your system. It's and we'll back. see you Monday night. Monday night. I can't wait. Good luck.